Hi, this is Kendrick Johnson with themedschool.com. I'm a third year medical student at Toro University, Nevada, and this video is intended to be a review for USMLE Step 2. And uh, we are going to go over pericarditis, pericardial effusion, hemopericardium, and cardiac tamp tamponade. So pericarditis is the most common problem uh, that you can have with your pericardium. So just as a refresher, the pericardium is kind of that sac that encloses the heart. And pericarditis is any inflammation of that sac. So what kinds of things cause inflammation? Well, lots of things do. Um, any type of infection, which is going to be probably your most com common uh, cause of pericarditis, so viral infections, bacterial infections, TB. And uh, one that you're likely to hear a lot about on the boards is Dressler syndrome, which is going to happen a couple weeks after you uh, uh, somebody experiences an MI. So uh, as we get a little bit uh, later on, we'll talk about the uh, presentation of pericarditis and keep that in mind with uh, a post-MI patient. So cardiac surgery or any interventional procedure or trauma, so basically anything that's getting in there and messing with the heart, the pericardium, and it, anything that's uh, in that area, you know, the, the heart is surrounded by, by the lungs, the esophagus, um, and uh, so anything, anything in there um, could be uh, a potential source of inflammation. So autoimmune uh, diseases like lupus, um, and including drug-induced lupus, so remember procainamide and the others that cause drug-induced lupus. And then uh, uremia, dialysis, hypothyroidism, and uh, lung, breast cancer, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and mesothelioma. And then a lot of these are going to be idiopathic. So they're going to come in with a, a history of recent infection or an MI or trauma or surgery. A lot of times it's going to be in an upper respiratory infection that they had, you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, they'll have this positional retrosternal pain. So this is the same area where, where you might feel an angina or um, an MI, but uh, it feels... Uh, it feels different according to pericarditis patients, and it also will um, be somewhat relieved by uh, leaning, sitting up and leaning forward. And uh, it's not going to be affected by exercise or food, so you can, uh, in that way, kind of rule out angina and, uh, and GERD. So if somebody comes in with this, this chest pain, um, of course you're going to work them up for... Uh, any type of heart pathology. So you're going to listen to the lungs, or you're going to listen to the heart and the lungs, and uh, you'll hear the, a pericardial rub on exam. You can go to YouTube and, and look up what that sounds like. And then EKG, like we have here on the right, uh, shows ST elevation in all leads. So we know that other cardiac pathology causes ST elevation. Um, but then we're going to do an echocardiogram. So, and that's how we confirm the diagnosis. So, in, in order to treat pericarditis, if it's a viral pericarditis, all we've got is NSAIDs. We just want to, uh, we just want to reduce the inflammation. And of course, bacterial endocard or pericarditis will give antibiotics for. And then, uh, in some cases, they do do a pericardectomy uh, if it becomes a recurrent problem. So, moving on to the next pathology of the pericardium, uh, we're going to talk about uh, cardiac tamponade. So, and this is somewhat related because pericarditis can cause uh, pericardial effusion, which can lead to ca cardiac tamponade. tamponade. So, so tamponade is just the compression of the heart caused by the accumulation of fluid in the pericardium. So if the heart is getting compressed, it's obviously not going to be able to expand to fill um, 
and to uh, have the same amount of cardiac output. And the two major causes are effusion and, and hemopericardium, or, or blood in the pericardium. So the uh, pericardial effusion can be caused by pericarditis, but it can also just be any systemic edema. Um, so, so different types of uh, shock can cause it, or, um, or hypertension, uh, other things that can cause edema can be associated with pericarditis. And then hemopericardium, usually we're going to have something, something sharp sticking into your chest or, or something hitting your chest really hard. But medita metastatic cancer or infections can cause hemopericardium as well. And the classic presentation um, of cardiac tamponade is Beck's triad. So you have distant heart sounds, um, distended jugular veins, and hypotension. And uh, also you're going to have pulses paradoxes, so, um, so you're going to want to... Uh, you're going to want to uh, check the blood pressure uh, on inspiration. They, they call it pulses paradoxus, and I've, I've spelled it wrong here, but they call it par pulses paradoxus, but it's it's not really paradoxical uh, in that uh, that's what happens on normal inspiration is that you have a fall in blood pressure. But the difference is uh, that it's a an increased uh, change in blood pressure on inspiration. So over 10 millimeters. And then electrical alternans is just when you're looking at the QRS complexes, some of them are taller than others. And uh, here on the right, uh, I've got um, a picture that I thought would be most helpful if it was in Russian, so I translated that for you. And the treatment of cardiac tamponade includes uh, immediate pericardiocentesis. Um, and the, again, there's good YouTube videos to, to look up uh, how to do that. But basically, we're just uh, letting all the fluid drain out of the pericardium. If it's not quite a, a tamponade, but you do have a fusion or hemopericardium, then you can just work on treating the underlying con condition and uh, the fluid will resolve itself um, in some cases. But if it's a if it's tamponade, if if we're getting the pulses paradoxus, electrical alternans, uh, and Beck's triad, then it's time to do pericardiosynthesis. So the images used here, uh, including our Russian image, were uh, found um, on uh, Wikimedia Commons, and uh, they have a Creative Commons license, so you can use them if you need them. And uh, please email me at kendrick at themedschool.com if you have any um, suggestions for making it better or uh, anything that I, I uh, didn't include that should, I should have. Or you can uh, leave a comment below the video. Thanks.